Hi everyone, it's Jenna Redfield here, back again with another YouTube video. I'm super excited because I got a brand new camera lens. Let me know if you like it better than my other one. I've been wanting a new camera lens for a long time and I got a 24 millimeter, so I'm super excited. I wanted to talk today about one of the topics that I think is really important when it comes to Notion and that is tables. Now, a lot of people like myself started on Airtable and so I was used to kind of the table concept, but Notion takes it to the next level. I was actually in a Facebook group for ADHD women and I posted about Notion and somebody said, I don't use Notion because when I use the check marks, the actual items don't go away. And my first thought was, I don't use checklists. I don't use any of those. I just use tables. And so I realized a lot of people maybe aren't even using tables inside of Notion. They're just using it almost like as a notes app and that's definitely not to me the the power of Notion. So today I'm gonna to be talking about three different parts when it comes to how to use tables and different views. We're gonna be talking about number one, how many different table options there are and what they look like, as well as how to kind of toggle in between them, something I didn't really learn until recently. Number two, we're gonna be talking about filtered views. So how you can use filters. Filters are so powerful in tables and I didn't quite realize the power of filters until again, a couple months into using Notion. And then finally using linked databases, which is so powerful to be able to reshare your table in different places. So I'm super excited to get started. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more videos on Notion. Let me know in the comments what other types of videos you want me to make. I also do videos on ADHD and other things. So make sure to comment below um, and let me know you're watching. So let's get into Notion. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys specifically how I use tables. So this is an example of a table that I use called the brain, which I got this as a template. I can leave the link below. But what I've done is I've actually started building out different views within the table. Now, one of the things I didn't know when I first started Notion was the fact that you can actually rename all the different views. So right now I have them filtered as well as have different. So for example, if I wanted to see all the movies I've ever seen, which took me a while to remember them all, I made a full list of movies. Now, the reason I'm able to see this, this is still, all of these come from the main brain list, but what I've done is I've filtered it so that the type is movie. So you can see I can actually filter it by whatever I want, but I filtered it so that the type contains movie. I could do book, I could do TV show, whatever. And I have done that for different views. So I have done a TV show one as well. So this filter is type contains TV show. So if I go back to all, I will see everything. And you could even type in, let's think of a movie, Fargo. You'll see it's right here, Fargo, it's a movie. I didn't know what Fargo, it's not a romantic comedy. I probably mislabeled that. Um, but basically I have all of the different ways I can see it. Now there are six different types of views and in order to add a view, you click here. So there's table, which is like what you're seeing now. There's board, which looks like this, where you can actually do this way. There is timeline, which I don't usually use a lot. That's more for projects, um, project planning. I'm just not personally a fan of the timeline one, so I don't use it a lot. Calendar is great, especially for if you are planning anything. I don't use calendar unless it's for like future things. List, I guess I also don't really use list unless it's kind of a condensed area. And then gallery, I do use gallery a lot, especially if there's images. So for example, if I go over to um, meals and recipes, you'll see almost all of these are in gallery view. The reason why is I can quickly see what you know, food I wanna make. And you'll see that this is again, an all situation. I have sorted it by, you know, I have just ones that have air fryers. So if you go to filter, or actually, I don't know if I filtered that correctly. So if I wanted to, I'll just show you what I do. So I go to equipment and then I would contain air fryer. So right now I have just recipes, but I don't like that view. So I think I made a gallery one. So yes, I have a gallery view that is filtered by air fryer. Now, one thing to think about is if you end up doing more of the, uh, let's go back to the brain. If you go back to, let's just say we're in movies. One of the other things you want to think about is how to organize them. So right now you can click group by, and right now it's grouped by media platform, but I could also change that to year published. So if I wanted to know what year a movie came out, which I have labeled all of them, 
you know, how many movies came out in 1964 that I have seen. That kind of thing. So you can sort and group by different labels. Another thing that you can do is you can um, sort by name, type, whatever. So if I wanted to go back to movies in a list form, right now it is sorted by name first, then category, then media platform. If I wanted to have them sorted by category first, I would just move that up and now you'll see the category sorted first. And you can actually change, so if you go into the category and configure the options, you can actually change the order. So if I wanted superhero to be on the very top, I could just bring that all the way to the top. And now you will see, it should automatically sort, let's see. I sort by media platform, category. Yep, now superheroes on top. So basically I am able to do all of this within these back and forth options, which then you can also go and rename. So I could call this movies um, board if I wanted to make sure people knew it was a board and not a movies list. I could call this movies, uh, let's see, edit movies list. And then the other thing you can do, let's go back to movies. I don't have pictures of all of my movies, but I do have some for my books. So if I wanted to, you'll see that I have pictures. I can also change, so, so go to properties. I would add the card preview as the page cover. And then you can also fit the image so that you can actually see. I don't have it for all of them, but I do have it for some. So that's like one of the main ways that I use tables is I usually do either a, um, table board or a gallery view and then I filter it so I have all of these different options but the other thing that you can also do is you can actually create linked databases so this is a different way to use tables and I do this a lot for example maybe within my uh, knowledge base so I have a bunch of different topics and one of the things I recently did was decide to have a jewelry table. So if I open this as a page, you'll see I have a table called products I own. Now one of my other tips with tables is try to do as least amount as possible and filter the heck out of everything. So I have, instead of just having a jewelry database, I have a products I own database and then jewelry is just a tag within there. So what I've done is I filtered it so the type is jewelry and then what I did was I actually literally just went like this. So if I go all the way to the bottom, I click this and then I do linked database. So there's a main products I own database, but what I'll do is I'll type in products I own. I will find the actual database. I believe this is it. And then you can filter from there. You'll see there's no views besides just the main um, table view. So for this one that I just did up here, what I did was I added a board view but you'll see again, it shows everything. It's I've sorted it by color. And then what you'll do is you'll go over to um, filter and then you'll go to add filter and then type. And then I clicked uh, like jewelry. Actually, I go to kind and I put, I think like uh, earrings, let's just do earrings. So you'll see now that I have all of my earrings only, but then I can also go into properties and add the page cover. So you'll see I have all of my images of all my earrings. So that's how you do a linked board, a uh, linked database board. So you can actually go back to the main board. So this is the main board and you'll see I also have done the thing where I have the flippy, um, you know, office supplies, whatever I have. So this is the main board, but I can also embed those as linked databases which is really, really helpful. So that's a really, really helpful tip to if you're wanting to have like separate pages. And the last thing that I think is important to talk about is kind of like figuring out how to use this in a way where you can actually get rid of things based off of your filters. So if I go to action zone, this is my action items list. And I have filtered it so that the only things that are on there is where done is not checked. So when somebody was saying, oh, I don't like Notion because you can't like check it off and it goes away. If I clicked on one of these, it automatically deletes it. I'm gonna undo that because I don't wanna do that. But this is also true, for example, in the meal planning one, when I have my shopping list, 
right now it's only filtered to the view where the need is checked. So if I go back to the groceries list and I need, for example, F five FTP, if I go back to that page that has um, my shopping list, you'll see that five HTP has been added because this view is filtered only where the need is checked. So the check mark is great. If you easily want to check something off on your checklist, you filter it so that the only things that you see are things that aren't checked. This is so helpful and much better than using just the checklist function. So like if you wanted to make a checklist, that's an option to do list. I just don't like this um, work on project because if you click on it, you'll see it doesn't go away. That's what this girl is saying. And that's why I don't do checklists like this. I do tables. So with my action items, you know, if I have to, if I want to do something, I filter it in a table so that when it's done, I'll check it and then it will filter it out because it's not there anymore. I just want to see what I'm currently working on. So I think these are kind of the main ways that I personally use tables, uh, filtered views, linked databases, and then all the different ways that you can use views. Let me know if you guys like this system. If you have any more questions about Notion, I think this is really helpful. I always leave all of my uh, database links or in all of the template links that I've used. Let me know if there's anything that you want me to make because I definitely would love to eventually start selling uh, templates. So let me know. Um, hope that this was really helpful for how you guys can use tables inside of Notion. And I'll talk to you guys soon.